my Gavan and folks. Today we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x times 1 plus x over x squared minus x plus 1 times log of negative log x dx. Okay, cool. Now, how exactly should we begin? Well, common sense would dictate that we could do some kind of long division for this rational function, but that is quite boring. So instead, we're just going to expand using 1 plus x. So we have the integral from 0 to 1, x times 1 plus x squared over x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 log of negative log x dx. So the denominator, we see that that is the expanded version of x cubed plus 1, so I'll just write it like that. And up top, we have 1 plus x squared, which I will now expand as x squared plus 2x plus 1 times the logarithm of negative log x dx. And now, expanding the multiplication further, we have the integral from 0 to 1, x cubed plus 2x squared plus x over x cubed plus 1 log of negative log x, and it would have been quite nice if I would have a plus 1 somewhere upstairs. So I'll just expand using 0, and the version of 0 I'd like to use is plus 1 minus 1. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 1 plus 2x squared, terribly, sorry about that, plus x minus 1 over x cubed plus 1 log of negative log x dx. So we have some lovely cancellation taking place here, and we're left with the integral from 0 to 1. 1 plus, we can do some factorization upstairs, that is writing it as 2x squared plus 2x minus x minus 1, which should sort out to 2x minus 1, times x plus 1, terribly, sorry about that, over x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 log of negative log x dx, which is exactly the result we would get if we had done some long division. But of course, this was a lot more fun. So we're left with integral 0 to 1. And of course, this whole term was being multiplied by log of negative log x. So we're left with log of negative log x, and of course I'm going to invoke the linearity of the integration operator, dx over here, plus the integral from 0 to 1, 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1, log of negative log x, dx. Now, the first integral on the, the right-hand side is pretty interesting, because this is actually an integral version of a very special constant. So if I were to let log x equal u, rather in this case, I would like log x to be equal negative u. So x equals e to the minus u, and dx equals negative e to the minus u du, and the integral transforms into an integral from as log x approaches zero, it's gonna approach negative infinity, so u is gonna approach infinity. And as, log, and as x approaches 1, we have log of 1, which is 0. And of course, this negative sign outside means that we can switch up the order of the integration operators just to get, risk, just to get rid of it. And terribly sorry, I misspoke. We can switch up the order of the limits of integration to get rid of it. And we're left with what exactly? Oh yeah, log of... Negative log x is actually u, so we have log of u, e to the minus u, du, and this in fact equals negative euler mascheroni constant. So this implies that i here equals negative euler mascheroni constant plus the integral from 0 to 1 of something quite interesting. Notice here that we can invoke a really cool integration by parts technique, or integration by parts root. Integration by parts is a technique. Again, math is a lot easier than English. So we can adopt an integration by parts approach. Yeah, that was the word I was missing. By writing this out as log of negative log x, d of log x squared minus x plus 1, 
because we know that the derivative of x squared minus x plus 1 is in fact what we have upstairs in the numerator that is 2x minus 1. So on performing integration by parts, we now have negative order mascheroni constant plus log of negative log x times log of x squared minus x plus 1 with the limits being 0 and 1 minus the integral from 0 to 1 of log x squared terribly. Sorry about that. Log x squared minus x plus 1. And differentiating log of negative log x yields negative log x downstairs and of course another x term dx. Now evaluating this term using these limits is actually quite easy. 0 and 1 are both roots of x squared minus x. So as x approaches 0 and as x approaches 1, this thing approaches log 1, which of course crashes down to 0. So this thing converges to 0, implying that i here equals negative order mascheroni constant plus integral 0 to 1 log of x squared minus x plus 1 over x times log x dx. So we now have a really interesting integral on the right hand side. But how should we approach this? Well, the argument of the logarithm looks cool. I mean, it's x squared minus x plus 1. But it would have been nicer if this was something like, I don't know, x cubed plus 1 or an x plus 1. So let's get both. We have negative order mascheroni constant plus the integral from 0 to 1 of log x squared minus x plus 1 times, terribly sorry about that, x plus 1 again, terribly sorry about that, over x plus 1 divided by, of course, x times log x, and we have the differential element dx. Now, the benefit of this is that now I have the integral from 0 to 1, and using log properties, we have log of 1 plus x cubed. Again, terribly sorry about that. What is wrong with my handwriting today? It seems to be worse than usual. That's fine. And of course, I'm going to invoke log properties so that we have x times log x, and of course, I'm going to invoke the linearity of the integration operator and we'll have negative integral 0 to 1 log 1 plus x over x times log x dx. Okay, cool. Now this looks like a perfect opportunity to invoke Feynman's trick. And for that, we'll define the integral function i of alpha as the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus x to the alpha over x times log x dx. And the benefit of that is that we have basically i of 3 minus i of 1. So in the end, we can invoke a definite integral. And that will come in handy quite a bit later. So differentiating with respect to alpha yields i prime of alpha, or you can equal to integral 0 to 1, 1 over x times log x. And of course, we have to differentiate partially with respect to alpha. So the only function we have of alpha is this log term in the numerator. So we'll get 1 plus x to the alpha. And of course, we're going to differentiate 1 plus x to the alpha because of the chain rule with respect to alpha. So we're left with x to the alpha times log x dx. And we're immediately rid of the log x terms. And we're left with the integral from 0 to 1, x to the alpha minus 1 over 1 plus x to the alpha dx. Pretty easy stuff moving forward. We're just going to expand by alpha and we have 1 over alpha and the logarithm of 1 plus x to the alpha with the limits being 0 and 1. As x approaches 0, we get a 0. And as x approaches 1, we get a 1, leaving behind 1 over alpha times log 2. Okay, cool. Finally, we'll integrate with respect to alpha from 1 to 3, because those are our cases of interest. Recall that we're interested in the integral function at alpha equal to 3 and alpha equal to 1. So we have i of 3 minus i of 1 equal to log 2 times log alpha limits are 1 and 3. So we're left with log 1 being 0. So we have log 2 times log 3, which does look pretty dope. So that is i of 3 minus i of 1, 
which is one of the terms on the right hand side of the target integral, the other of course being this negative Euler Mascheroni constant. So all of this implies that the target integral i equals negative Euler Mascheroni constant plus log 2 and log 3. Log 2 is often making appearance making an appearance on the channel. Log 3 is a more rare sight here. So this was awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.